Hi guys, got the Eagle back from uh, the inspection garage. So I had the enhanced inspection done. It gave me a bunch of paperwork that I could submit to a notary, uh, actually a, a PennDOT <coughs> agent in town that uh, takes care of that kind of stuff. And I got a plate put on the old girl. So she's legal now. I just got to get her inspected. I got 10 days in PA to drive it from uh, the date of the initial registration before I have to get it inspected. But I had an appointment set up for Monday at my buddy's uh, Marv's. And uh, lo and behold, now the windshield wipers aren't working. So I took the windshield wiper motor out, which was a pain in the neck. And this is the plug that goes to it. And this is the plug that comes from the you know, from the switch. It just doesn't have any power. It, it just drifts, you know, it barely moves. So I was like, what the heck is going on here? Anyway, I took it out, put it on a battery out of the vehicle, and it spins and it's strong and it goes. So I thought, well, what I should have done in the first place, just a quick test, I put my jumper cables on here, my little pickup truck, energize these wires and the things go like crazy they work fine so the motor is good I could have changed the motor it wouldn't wouldn't have fixed anything so of course my next suspect I'm imagining here is the switch and the switch in the old American Eagle is this guy right here and I've already started messing with it a little bit but this switch right here it just doesn't seem to be I don't know I guess that's the problem so I'll have to dig into that. This thing's already broken. It's got an extra knob here. You know, it says fast, slow, intermediate, blah, blah, blah. And that turns this little white sleeve here, which I'm turning. And I thought, man, I get that to turn. I bet you it'll get, get working. But it doesn't. So I'm going to have to probably pull the switch out. Well, that was easy. I was able to just pop that cover up, and reach right down there. You can see that little four, pro uh, that, well, it's a six prong plug. That's the other end of the switch pr plug that goes right here. I got the switch out. Pretty, pretty quick and easy. I'm going to go into the barn now and tear the thing apart and see what I can figure out. Hey guys, learn the same lesson again as usual. Um, working on the wipers on this, on this bus, this American Eagle motor coach. Nine times out of ten, it's a simple thing. And the simple thing is, I just wasn't getting a good ground. So, uh, hopefully with any luck, I've remedied that now. <laughs> Took two stages. First, I hook, hooked up a ground to this to the pasture side on the frame. Nothing. Just didn't ground good. I don't know. I, I screwed a, a, a tapping screw with, a, with a, your typical wire connector loop, just like I got here. The one with the hook, screwed that down under the frame, ran the wire up, hooked it to this. Still didn't get a decent ground. I'm thinking, well, I, that had to be a ground. So that, that threw me off track for a little bit. But then it dawned to me, and this thing's awesome. I, I love this tool. And if I was a little more clever, it would have it led me right to the problem quicker. But it's called a power probe. And you can, you can plug it in. Like, you can plug it in to your cigarette lighter. It's got an adapter that you can hook right up to a battery if you want to. But what a, what a neat tool. I don't know if I could find it where I leave it. <laughs> so the cable, I plugged it into the cigarette lighter and I ran the cable out. Oh, here it is. And here's the tool. And the neat thing about this power probe tool is you can test stuff. Okay, a little green, green came up. So I know that's grounded. And I was getting a ground, but it wasn't enough. It just, it was enough to, to just, Tell me it was a ground, but not enough to actually do anything, so it wouldn't work. But by pushing that there and turning the switch on, you can actually test and see by pushing this button here on the negative side, it actually supplies ground to that point now. And it wouldn't that's when the wiper started moving. I'm like, oh man, I'm just not getting the ground. See, I'm getting the ground now too. And I wasn't what would happen is I would get a ground when I wasn't turned on, but as soon as I turn on the key switch and there's power coming here, I was reading 14 volts here. And that told me I just wasn't getting good enough ground to, to do it. So, uh, the other thing that wasn't working, and this was a dead giveaway too, was the horn. This is a horn, an electric air switch. So it's an electric air valve and it comes off the horn button and it operates these air horns here under the, under the, the hood of the vehicle here. So that wasn't working either, and I thought, man, what's the common denominator? Well, 
common thing is this green wire is running up to the wiper motor. That was another I tried. I thought I wasn't getting a good ground right up to the wiper motor, and that's why I hooked that green. I, I don't think you can see it on the video. But then I hooked that green wire. Oh, yeah, you can see it. I hooked that green wire right there, and I still wasn't getting it. And that's when it dawned on me that this bar here really... For some reason, just as it's getting ground, but not enough. I don't know if it screws into metal down here where it hooks in. Up here, it hooks into the fiberglass. So obviously, that's fiberglass doesn't conduct electric. Last I knew. So uh, all that to say, I ran another ground. So now I've got another ground coming from this, and it goes down. And I grounded it down in here. You can see that green wire going down and down there is the horns there's two horns mounted there and i ran that green wire so it hooks it it hooks to the the horn mounting bolt and i put an electrical con connector on that and hooked it uh, to that horn mounting bolt to get a ground this wire evidently this white wire is also a ground it comes up and it grounds this relay so this whole bulkhead here this whole the very you know it's the front of the bus underneath the hood that's all a piece of plywood. So it's none of that's grounded unless you run a ground wire to it. So this was driving me nuts for a while. I checked the switch out. I, I was monkeying around with that. I got a wire tie this up. I don't like this wire dangling. Um, so I checked the switch. I, check, I checked everything. I've been checking everything. It's driving me nuts. But I think I finally got it. Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, the buzzer will kick on for the low oil, low oil pressure unless I start it. So I might as well just fire it right up. Oh, no, I have to fire it up. You can see the windshield wipers are working. Horn's working too. And it was just a simple, simple thing. They even park. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. Ooh, it's... Oh, man. It's got intermittent too. That's awesome. I'll just turn it right off. And they're off. They're not really parked too, too slick, but... They, uh, the rods, they get a little wear to them. They're, they're getting a little sloppy. Everything under there is a little bit sloppy because the old girl does have over 300,000 miles on it. Must be, maybe it was Eddie Money's truck. He loves a rainy night. Anyway, that's how this went today. Now you just gotta, I got the switch hooked back in, put the little squirt button, the button back on it. And push the button in it. You get your washer, which is cool. Yep, it even starts operating the thing. I think I'm out of washer fluid. Oh, there it goes. Ooh, it throws, <laughs> it throws washer fluid off to the side. <laughs> that's cute. Anyway, I guess that's uh, that's fixed. Thank goodness. All right, guys, till the next one.